I write entirely to find out what I'm thinking, what I'm looking at, what I see, and what it means. Joan Didion. Why do I write? Well, why do anything to expend energy into an activity for no immediate reward? At this moment, I'm entering a forbidden place I should not explore through the medium of writing. Whether blogging or poetry or the leather-bound notebook, by discovering the true nature of thoughts, unlike George Orwell, I didn't consider literary ambitions beyond mere words. I found the power of writing later in life. Thus with time, I get to explore with writing what lies in the inward eye and piece together the puzzle of my psyche. An opportunity to voice my journey as I navigate life with a dynamic map and a scribbled notebook. At the same time, I take notes along the way to distill the wisdom found in different disciplines and schools of thought against my judgment. I'll meditate on the collective knowledge and experience to describe a handbook to living a good life. There is a universal trope we all share and we create as authors or readers in fictional worlds filled with characters with distinct personalities and in motivations. Our symbolic language makes humanity unique apart from animals, nature, and everything else. Erich Fromm writes, Symbolic language is a language in which inner experiences, feelings, and thoughts are expressed as if they were sensory experiences, events in the auto world. It is a language which has a different logic from the conventional one we speak in the daytime, a logic in which not time and space are the ruling categories, but intensity and association. By exploring this concept of human nature and symbolic language, allows us to imagine a world in dreams and act out those desires to help guide us to living a virtuous life by asking, what is human nature and its relation to the symbolic language? How can we better understand it through literature and art? Are we good or evil or both? Can we find a satisfying answer from the disciplines of evolutionary biology, psychology, and other fields of science? How can studying mythology, philosophy, and religion inform our moral decision-making in daily life? How can we, with the knowledge gained, help curb the darker side of human nature that impairs our judgment? Exploring history can teach us more about modern trends and not repeating the errors of the past. Reading, researching, and reflecting on various writing topics helps us think more critically and creatively. It also serves to inspire generations of writers to write in their genres. When we reflect on why we behave in certain ways or process a specific belief that conflicts with reality or with others, I sometimes ask why the mind is wrought with fear, guilt, and shame, at other times filled with joy, euphoria, or spontaneity. When I look at various ideologies, they all sound great on paper. Still, when you recognize the nuances of human nature, those campaigns fail to succeed. The impetus that led me to walk on this path, I found myself confronting both my past self and my growing self. Once childhood innocence waned, I woke up in a strange, brutish, and indifferent world to what I felt was strange, brutish, and indifferent to me. To imagine I was living with the lie that lay behind ignorance. I did not believe before that childhood upbringing played a significant role in the way it shapes our worldview. The moment I noticed it, I became hungry for knowledge to help me better understand myself my biases, fallacies, insecurities, fears, and anxieties. Also, people's motivation, desires, goals, and their overall philosophy as we travel through these landscapes that many before us have walked. I recognize why I appreciate literature and art. Whether it's books or video games, these mediums speak to our personal lives. They shed light on the human condition and how life can seem like a maze full of obscurity. The more I uncover, the more questions I raise. The more dots I've connected, the more painful revelations surface. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. Joseph Campbell From childhood to adulthood, I've seen the many challenges and wounds I've carried manifest in unhealthy behaviors. I've kept suppressing my distorted reality with distractions like finding comfort in romantic relationships and excessive ego-driven habits such as partying on the weekend, playing video games, and using social media. In moderation, these activities are fine, yet I was caught in a web of overthinking. With the constant escape from reality, I develop a habit of impulsive behavior, and I return to these comforts at the same time the wounds continue to gnaw in the subconscious. In my late 20s, it finally culminated as simultaneous events collided at once, pushing me past the threshold guardians. Between the years of 2013 through 2015, I have adopted a nihilistic worldview brought upon by the growing unease day after day. I was stuck in victimhood. I blamed everyone else, taking almost no responsibility for my own actions. I lashed out at people trying to be supportive and fabricated a persona I knew in my soul was not genuine. Despite the call for adventure, I never summoned the courage to discover the hidden wisdom. 
Like a protagonist in a fantasy world, when something disrupts their way of life, they are inexperienced or naive to perceive it. When we venture into the unknown, wisdom awaits on the other side. We can discover the ingredients to live a fulfilling life and trust in those who will support us in our journey. Regardless of what obstacles or challenges present themselves, whether they are inner or outer forces. In the longest passage of solitude, my thoughts were wrought with fear, insecurities, and hopelessness. I was one hell of an actor because people rarely noticed. Gradually, I began looking within with compassion, challenging my worldview and what my environment was lecturing me, then confronting and healing old wounds, seeking answers to many questions I had over the years but neglected to explore the dark cave of revelations. The shift began with an innate feeling that kept poking, and I surmised something was missing. The first thing that came to mind was exploring my passions. I was still determining if I could make a career out of it and if it would resonate with me long enough to endure. I excavated clues from my childhood. I read countless books and articles and taken various personality tests. Honestly, I didn't even know who I was or what the word self meant. I dabbled with drawing, painting, graphic design, web design, web development, and branding. I mused over the idea of starting a startup with a friend, becoming a lifestyle blogger or a video game designer. Basically, I explored many things, then there it was smack in the face, yet I could not put the pieces together. Now that I look back, it is quite evident that writing is a lifestyle I was destined to embark on. The clues were stacked away in boxes and burned onto DVD's disc. I had a collection of poems and stories that collected dust over the years while hundreds upon hundreds of journal entries, either enclosed in a paperback notebook or hidden from sight on Google Drive, the answer was right in front of my nose. We must let go of the life we have planned so as to accept the one that is waiting for us, Joseph Campbell. So, why writing of all the choices I've explored? Because writing is an outlet to help me make sense of the universe. It's therapy to assess and dissect emotions. It's a tool to construct strategies and challenge arguments craft narratives and assess the character's motivation, create fantastical worlds and mythologies, unfurl the imagination where reality can't meet expectations, take a character on a journey and watch how their development unfolds when faced with challenges and conflict, craft poetry to take raw ideas and emotions and poetically condense them in a few chosen words that speak volumes, and use the techniques of writing to give ideas substance. The power of writing reveals the psyche of human nature in nuanced ways. We humans suffer from a consciousness-derived psychological condition rather than an instant, controlled animal condition. We are burdened with what we must bear and strive to understand, seeking solace in different disciplines to lessen the bluntness of dreadful thoughts. As a writer, it's an exercise to challenge my political attitude. For serious writers drafting your own stories, are you being guided under a political bias that steers your everyday life to enter private echo chambers for the selfish interests of your tribe? Or are you open with different perspectives that challenges your belief that the world isn't as black and white as you believe? The power of writing offers us the ability to not only slay our dragons, but also explore the beauty and complexity of reality by crafting our own stories in the direction we want to take by meeting our wish fulfillment. Writing aims to provide insight that makes a more robust understanding of the world and our human condition. Also, what insights can we glean from history's greatest thinkers by reading their interpretations in their respective areas? We could model our lives and stages by borrowing Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, the monomyth, to step outside the ordinary world into the unknown that holds tremendous potential. While coupling that journey by studying the insights found in philosophy, mythology, biology, psychology, history, and literature, the manuscripts we write are drafts of future possibilities guiding each scene of our lives. We imagine these fictional worlds and dreams with superpowers to deal with everyday challenges and pursue goals, using magic as a tool to affect the world. Believers reenacted a myth in the form of a ritual in the hope or expectation of magically effecting change in the world. Neil Burton As I made progress with every journey, I stumble and reflect upon. I'm still far from perfect since our evolutionary biology is waging a power struggle with consciousness. I've grown up with a narrative that distorted the truth. I've learned we must curb our ego while struggling to see the lie for what it is and define what is moral and true, then find a balance between the two. We are nowhere near grown away from millions of years of evolution. Still, we can live with our dual nature and embrace it. I believe all the information I have written serves as the backbone for what I want to accomplish with writing, to document my hero's journey as an author, share topics like research, readings, and writing tips and processes. 
how different schools of thought and disciplines are interwoven and can enhance our thinking through writing. How can we derive meaning from myths, poetry, fiction, movies, video games, etc. as ways to convey them in our lives? Ultimately, this platform can serve as a source of wisdom for all to collaborate, whether for entertainment or ideas to help draft your own handbook to living a good life. A hero is someone who has given his or her life to something bigger than oneself. Joseph Campbell How will I convey the message? The symbolic language of art is the medium to convey the meaning behind human nature and shed light on its various themes to share the wisdom or truth about reality. Learning from different disciplines of study can help you draft your own handbook for living a good life. Furthermore, understand how our environment shapes our worldview and the compassion required to curb our demons while negotiating with the desires of others. To become wholesome, we must embrace our light and shadow. We can accomplish this through poetry or by observing how fictional characters resolve conflicts in their hero's journey. The adventure evoked a quality in his character that he didn't know he possessed, Joseph Campbell. We can leverage human nature to maximize the art of living. The art of living can help us to refine our notions of reality and how to navigate it so we can find a meaningful purpose in the objective world surrounded with others and how they navigate and interpret reality. We can study and extract wisdom from art such as myths, novels, short stories, verses, and narrative-driven video games to draw out the themes of the human condition that plagues us all and provide us with the practical wisdom to navigate reality and craft a handbook to living a good life. I know I have mentioned human nature several times throughout, so here's a definition. Human nature is a bundle of characteristics including ways of thinking, feeling, and acting, which humans are said to have naturally. The term is often regarded as capturing what it is to be human or the essence of humanity. A brief definition of a concept is still highly debated across several disciplines. Humans seek to identify our place in the universe and ask deep philosophical questions to debate the right actions we should take as individuals and as societies. This is what it means to be human. Therefore, by exploring the various disciplines such as mythology, the study of myths, Myths are sacred stories. They tell of the world's creation, the emergence of gods and the first man and woman, the adventures of heroes and the audacity of tricksters, the nature of heaven and the underworld, and what will happen when time ends. Every human culture has its own myths, passed from one generation to the next. These sacred stories helped our ancestors find their place in the universe and answer big picture questions about why it's still valid, why myths are incredible and how we can use them. In the fields of science such as evolutionary biology, anthropology, and psychology, we get to explore the historical past and learn from our ancestors how the environment has molded our evolutionary path. And studying under these disciplines, we identify within our nature the purpose of fear and anxiety, which were important for our survival for most of human history. When we were weaker and vulnerable to large predators, diseases, and unforgiven natural disasters, Nowadays, we are mostly safe from these conditions, and sometimes our fears are justified, but humans are prone to exaggeration, biases, and fallacies that magnify these adaptive features in the day-to-day. -day. Furthermore, what's up with the mind, emotion, and behavior? How can we're mostly tribal and how much does culture and civilization play a role in how we think, feel, and interact with others? Therefore, through the study of history, which helps people understand the present by looking at what happened in the past, History gives us a clearer picture of the present, the possibilities of the future, and a rich human lineage that shapes the way nations, cultural traditions, and human efforts turn out. History is most important when the mysteries of the present can be traced back to their roots or to important events that change the course of history. Without history, it would be hard for us as a species to fully understand the present and the future, since the present is directly shaped by the past. In philosophy, we ask what is good, aspects of morality and ethics, what is true, how do we know what we know, what is truth in the perception of an individual's reality, also, what and who am I, how misled values and virtues are sometimes distorted by false beliefs. Also, why don't we talk about death at the dinner table, how a society organizes itself and the significance of a shared philosophy, history, and culture. Lastly, with the power of writing and reading, where writing helps us meld abstract words in our minds and infuse life into them. Through reading, we find inspiration from an array of literature that uncovers a vital theme or meaning in stories by which we travel through a fictional character's trials and tribulations, and whether they return home with the elixir or forgo it in a favor of a different path. Lastly, how the beauty of poetry can speak to raw emotions or intuitions that otherwise we fail to explore but is essential to unravel for our well-being. 
The adventure of the hero is the adventure of being alive. Joseph Campbell. The gist. If you made it this far, thank you. This is why I write. My unquenchable curiosity is a different monster I must appease since this is a massive endeavor. So, I think it's worth the effort. Not only will I learn, but I will also learn how much more I don't know. That sounds like a lifetime journey, and I'm excited to embark on it. It's human nature, after all. Remember, each day of your life is a short story, and why not take deliberate control in writing a book of those stories? There's nothing self-centered about it. If anything, it expands your worldview. Your life is a work of art. The infinite power you hold as a narrative of your story. Where words matter and see through the useless information that bombards us daily makes all the difference in the art of living. To summarize the essential points, what the hell is human nature? What can we learn from its evolutionary path from the very disciplines and schools of thoughts? Is human nature really at the core of our problems between the good and evil that afflicts the human species? Can we learn to embrace this contentious dual nature, the yin and yang? How can we learn to live a life with intention with the knowledge from our discoveries throughout the journey as we occasionally pause to reflect? Explore philosophy to find truth in a world with different opinions and how sophistry distorts the truth that often creates harmful conditions. Explore the stories and myths, fiction, and poetry to help us identify our place in the universe and unravel the phenomenon of the human condition. Also, how does society shape our ability to find purpose and meaning? Are we lacking rites of passage, which are resulting in a rise of mental health issues? Are we really pursuing the feeling of being alive? What metaphorical truth can we glean? Remember, writing is a tool to slay our demons and dragons, a tool for writing the stories of our life. Also, the importance of history is not to repeat the mistakes of the past and convey lessons to help live today and forge a better tomorrow. Besides documenting my hero's journey, I'll use my writing voice to share what I learned from my experiences and studies. Nothing perishes in the whole universe. It does but bury and renew its form. Joseph Campbell